Hi, Chris here. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at this uh, Oxford HD Max. Uh, it's a disc brake lock, I think, for, for motorbikes. Um, and it's a, obviously a disc detainer design, and it's a, a surprisingly interesting lock. Uh, when I bought this, I was expecting it to be reasonably straightforward, uh, and it proved to be anything but. And I had to learn a bit about the lock uh, to um, be able to get into it. Um, I think the first thing which is which is quite interesting is uh, that it has its rear tension and it has a fixed disc so that that position there on the key that looks like a max cut is in fact a fixed disc on the second to last disc in the lock uh, and that disc has got an interesting uh, interesting profile on it as well and it's got a sort of cutouts um, which don't extend across the full uh, the full width of the keyway what that means is if you if you stick a, a tool in like this and and try to turn the core, um, you can turn it all 90 degrees. But once you've done that, actually that fixed disc is then blocking, it's blocking the keyway off. And you try and put a tensioner down there uh, and it doesn't make it to the back of the lock. So um, straight away you've uh, you've set yourself up to fail. So that's, that's one thing. Um, also it has a, a gated spinner uh, and it has full skates. So there's quite a few videos of people picking Oxford uh, Oxford locks um, on YouTube already, uh, and I don't think any of them have got full skates or all that fixed disc at the back. Most of them have got the sort of standard um, sort of two discs worth of, of uncut key at the rear. So so I don't know whether this is a recent design change or whether there's just a, a few different versions around, whatever. Uh, but it did make it um, make it quite. A, quite a tricky lock actually um it's also uh if you notice there's you know that, that's all sort of normal but when you when you get to there there's a, a sort of springiness uh so I th something in there's sprung um and that's you know it's quite easy to relock it with the key uh but when you're using when you're using a pick that feels like an awful lot of force um, so you do need uh, some quite strong tools actually uh, um, wouldn't want to go in there with one of my homemade picks and, and lock it up because I think that it might well break um, so what I'm using today I do have a homemade tensioner made from an ejector pin uh, but I'm actually using the disc man manipulator from the multi pick Aries set uh, which really cool thing very nice uh, nice and strong it seems nice and strong anyway uh, and that integrates nicely with the RWB handles so um, that's perfect uh, perfect for me I did have to make a new tensioner this um, sort of existing um, rear tension rear tensioners like this one they sort of cover cover two discs worth of uh, of distance in the lock and that in that direction um, and of course if I put that into the back of here you can see it's it's sitting on the, the fixed disc so you can't even turn the tensioner um, and uh, yeah it's just not going to work that combined with the fact that you've got the um, the gated spinner at the front means using front tension would be, would be very difficult I haven't actually tried but I think it would be very hard because you then have to pick disc one and then back out and re-pick the uh, the spinner so that would be you know not impossible but you know probably quite quite difficult uh, the other thing which isn't so much a feature it's just a characteristic of the lock is it is really minimal feedback um, particularly at the start of the pick there's almost no feedback at all you can hardly feel anything drag it's really hard to feel the gates what you can just about feel is uh, the edge of the gate as you turn past it so you can't feel the sidebar drop in or I couldn't feel the sidebar drop in until I developed the pick a bit but you you can feel just a little bit of extra resistance as you try and turn a disc past the gate so for the first um, first pass through the lock what I'm looking for is just a little bit of extra resistance and then I can come back through and work out what's a true gate what's a false gate and uh, and get it open um, not all, I don't think all of the discs have got full skates, but some of them definitely do have um, at least two full skates. So yeah, overall, surprisingly interesting, surprisingly tricky pick. Uh, let's see it in action.
Okay, so here we are with the lock in the vise. See the key operating completely normally. And of course, for most locks, I would now turn everything clockwise, but this has got that fixed disc at the back, so I'm not going to, just going to go all the way to the back with the tensioner. Take that, get the pick tip to the back, and start picking. Okay, so that's not moving at all, that's in the fixed disc. Next one up. Tiny loose spot there. A little bit of extra resistance just there, so that's probably the edge of a gate. This next disc. That's dead, so I'm just going to leave it all the way clockwise. Okay. A little bit of extra resistance there. And there. This I think is the spinner. So I'm just going to turn that about 90 degrees. Not the best. There we go. Okay, that one feels tight now, so that's a false gate. Feels better there. That feels okay. That one. That's the one I turned fully 90. I think that is the right place for it. Oh, there we go. Fantastic. Right. Okay, uh, now I will lock this back up again. There's quite a lot of force to, to lock it, actually. There we go. It's locked, and then we need to get the tool out, so we're going to unpick the last couple of discs. Let's make sure tensioner out. Okay, that should do. And there we are. Oxford HD Max picked.